We're going to start off with the Winnipeg Jets minicamp. Players back on the ice today. And Jamie Thomas of Jets TV and Jets Radio 680 CGOB joins us now. JT, what's going on? Buddy, it's another weekend ahead of us. And um, looking forward to when main camp starts. But uh, really excited to be back in the rink and freezing our butts off again because it's been a little bit too long. Um, but, you know, it's, it's interesting this year with – with mini camp or mini pro camp or whatever, you look at the guys that are at camp and you're trying to figure out, sometimes there's a little bit of a, a, a hope for some of the younger players will be with the Winnipeg Jets this year. But this year, I don't know. I think it's pretty certain with a lot of line, um, a lot of the guys, uh, this roster seems to be set in my opinion, but you know, lots of guys, of course, Chris Veselainen is in this camp. Uh, he looks to be a lock to me in my opinion to be in camp. But, and then of course, Cole Perfetti's kicking around and Billy Hanela. But uh, a little bit uh, nice to see everybody out on the ice and Cole Perfetti looking bigger. And Billy Hainala looks like t two years older than he did last year. Doesn't look like that's not that baby face anymore. Looks like he belongs in the National Hockey League too. So uh, he's getting a little bit older. And of course, uh, it's good to see a Sveshnikov out there. Just not the Sveshnikov we're uh, used to seeing in the National Hockey League and Evgeny Sveshnikov, the brother of Andre. Yeah, the uh, you know it, it it really is fascinating. I mean, the entire landscape of the organization and the hockey mm -hmm. club going into main camp next week, and you know, for the last year or so, with the issues the Jets have had on defense, I mean, certainly from a fan standpoint, there's been so much talk about these young players being ready to step up and be solid contributors in the National Hockey League. Um, but the additions of Brandon Dillon and Nate Schmidt have completely changed the scenario on the back end. Logan Stanley's emergence last year. And the fact of the matter is right now that there are five, the Jets, if we're going to call Logan Stanley the sixth defenseman, mm -hmm. the other five guys all have at least three years left on their contract, which makes it a very crowded and busy spot and a very difficult spot for a young player like Billy Hainala, for instance, to crack the lineup. And yeah. um, I think we've all seen, even just in the clips, and you were there, I mean, he is, I mean, he's got the tools. There's a reason why they picked him in the first round. He excelled last year in the American Hockey League. And it does sort of look like the writing on the wall is at least at the start of the season, players like Hainala and Sandberg, who, if the trades weren't made, would have had a real legitimate shot to be in the Jets starting lineup, are back with the Moose. And I would imagine maintaining the spirits of some young players that might think that, geez, there's no spot for me might be the biggest challenge of the, you know, the organization and the moose coaching staff when the season gets going. Yeah, no question about that. And then you have Nathan Bull, you were turning to, right? Huss, like, so like it's, it's a log jam um, and, and a, in a position that was tr the, looked upon as the weak spot in the Winnipeg Jets organization, now there's almost a log jam right now. And you, you, I think, you know, Manitoba, the Moose this year, uh, they had a great set of defensemen a year ago. That looks to be the case again this year. But, you know, if you go back two years ago and Dylan Sandberg made a decision to stay in the NCAA to go for a third title, um, maybe that, you know, he can look upon that as maybe he could have came out a little bit earlier to get into the pro game um, and maybe it'd be a little bit step further ahead this year, right? So uh, clearly last year was a uh, eye opener for him uh, to be playing in pro hockey and it, it made the adjustments as such and the expectations a little bit higher. But if you're, you know, Dylan Sandberg was asked about that yesterday, all of a sudden there's people in front of you on the depth chart when it looked like maybe you would be a member of the Winnipeg Jets in 2021, 22. And that's not the case right now. And, you know, he said, tries not to think about it, but you can tell the competitor part of him, you know, there's something burning there with that. Look out like any, any of us would, that would be the natural reaction. So Dylan Sandberg and Billy Hanela, you know, they'll be hanging around. They'll, I'm sure they'll get some looks this year due to injuries if those things happen. Touch wood that they don't. But that looks like the, the American Hockey League and the Manitoba Moose looks like that, that's where they're, they're going to be to start the year because, I mean, it, it's a great problem to have if you're Paul Maurice. And you're Kevin Chevel Day off. Um, and certainly for the Manitoba Moose as well, I think this is something that people should be very happy about. Well, I'll tell you what, I mean, from a Moose perspective, I think mm. that the talent on this team, um, yes. you know, if we if the guys that we expect to start the season are in fact assigned to the Manitoba Moose, the talent yeah. on this team is going to be, I mean, in my opinion, probably the best that we've seen since the Moose came back to Winnipeg. Um, all that being said, just quickly, I know Billy spoke today, was asked about this. You mentioned Sandberg talking about it yesterday. Yeah. Uh, what did the young Finn have to say about uh, his spot in the pecking order and the challenge going into main camp? 
Well, I, I think it's the same thing, right? You then anybody would tell you, and anybody that handles these types of situations. I'm sure the Jets have talked with them as well. You just got to focus on what what you're doing right now, and not worry about the people that are in front of you at this point. And clearly, I'm sure the conversations have been had that you know the hockey's there's there's injuries, and these opportunities are going to pop up. So just keep working on your game at the American Hockey League level. And I think anybody that watches Billy Hanela and understands pro hockey and the the position of defense it just doesn't happen overnight you just don't walk into the national hockey league as a defenseman and yes he's a first round pick and i give him full credit for that and he has the skills to be there every day but there's still a learning curve that has to happen and because billy played in so many places a year ago maybe staying here you know regardless it's, it's still winnipeg even though you're in the american hockey league you're in one place in one organization instead of starting over in finland and going to the world juniors and then eventually making your way to north america now he's Right here, right now, I, he had, uh, touched on that as well. It's going to be a lot easier for him to have some stability in terms of location. And I think that's going to help his game. And another year at the minor pro level will certainly help him get a lot better. He, he looks older. It's like I just remember the day when he was drafted. He's still, <laughs> sometimes, you know, that's like we look at these guys all the time. Every year they go by, you and I are getting older and they just, they're, they're getting younger. And it just, you're like, is this guy really an NHLer? But Philly's starting to look a lot more like a pro. And, um, I think he understands the path that's in front of him um, and the people that are in front of him. And I think you have to be understanding, but I think this will be a really good developmental year for Ville Hainala. And I think a lot of patience has to be shown by him and people that want him to be eventually a member of the Winnipeg Jets. Yeah. I, I don't think there's any doubt about that. And you know, it's one phone call away because yeah. I, I do believe it. I think that if Sandberg, if Sandberg and Niku are playing 23, 24 minutes a night and excelling with the Manitoba Moose, and there's an injury in that top six, uh, I think one of those guys probably gets a call up. And depending on whether it's Sammy Niku or Nate Beaulieu and how they're handling that extra spot in the lineup, mm -hmm. I mean, all due respect to those two players, I mean, I think they sort of will be the extra guy. But if all of a sudden someone needs to come in and take the place of a Josh Morrissey or a Neil Pionk or a Dylan or whatnot, yeah. I think you're probably having that situation. And unfortunately, sometimes it's injury that begats opportunity. But that'll certainly be something that we'll, we'll be following throughout main camp. Um, yeah. And certainly these young men are going to get a chance to show what they can do in the exhibition season. And uh, I guess we'll move over to Cole Perfetti for a minute because I know right. he spoke today. And, um, you know, he's in a very similar situation to those uh, individuals where I think the, the common logic, particularly for Perfetti, who's even younger than another year at the American Hockey League level because he's allowed to play there this year, is a, right. a big, big coup for both the player and the team. Um, but he spoke today, and uh, he's not coming here to make sure that he can be the top-line center for the Moose. He yeah. wants to make the squad. Yeah, no question. And then you can see why he has that confidence playing at both you know the World Juniors and the Manitoba Moose a year ago and more experience at the World Championships too. Right? There's there's He had probably the best year you could have that, you know, if you're in junior, you're, yes, you're going to have the world juniors, but I'm sorry, Cole Perfetti does not belong in junior hockey. They're after watching enough last year and, and hearing reports from Daniel Fink and everybody that watches the moose every day, uh, he got better as time went along and, and it's better for the Winnipeg Jets and him that he was at the American hockey league level a year ago. So I can understand where the confidence is there. He's a confident kid anyways, but that year of minor pro and understanding that you're not going back to junior. He did mention that he's a little sad that that book, that door is closed, you know, that book is closed on, on playing in junior in the Sarnia sting. But I think you realize this is what's best for his development. I think of all the things that come out of the pandemic and the way things sh sh shook out a year ago, the kids that got to play in the American hockey league, I'm not just talking about Cole Perfetti that would have been in junior year ago or are a step ahead of where they would have been. And that's better for all their organizations. That's better and draft cap on them, and in particular with Cole Perfetti and the Winnipeg Jets right now. Uh, Perfetti, I mean, honestly, I think uh, yes. the, I mean, he's the one guy that actually was a winner through the entire pandemic. Yeah. I mean, his yeah. situation and normal times probably, well, and let's, let's say if they didn't make that tweak to the AHL rule for players like him for this season. Win a player. Well, I, I think you're talking about having him on the roster, but I don't know whether he's a regular everyday player right off the bat. He's probably mm -hmm. doing a lot of press box duty. And again, is that good form? 
is dominating a league that he's already done that going back to it good. So right. this, uh, for, for his perspective, I mean, it could not have worked out better, I think, for both the player and the organization. And I think those three guys that we talked about, while I do expect them to be Manitoba Moose at the start of the season, I think Perfetti in particular, um, but all three of those players could be factors later on in the season, depending on what happens with the big club. You mentioned Sveshnikov. Now, he's on um, an AHL deal right now. Mm -hmm. I think the expectation is there's a high likelihood that he gets a two-way deal with the Winnipeg Jets. I would imagine that probably happens after the first day of the season, just because of the cap implications of where they are. But how did he look? And uh, when you think about Sveshnikov and the Winnipeg Jets, where might there be a fit in the lineup if he's able to make the squad? Well, it's going to have to be on the wing at some point. And then maybe, you know, there, there's that ever that big question about who's going to be on the right side with Cop and Lowry. And we keep saying, you know, I, I think it's going to be Veseline. That's the strongest gut, gut feeling I have. But maybe Riley Nash, Paul Maurice mentioned that yesterday. Riley Nash is an option on that right wing uh, on that on that third line as well. So maybe that's a spot where Cole Perfetti is because he's played both the wing and and center too. So that that is a big question. But so Sveshnikov to me, you know, watching him through these first two days, very smooth skaters, got great hands. Yeah, you can see the skill that's there that made him a first round pick of the Detroit Red Wings. It just it ran out of space, right? It's just that we've heard the story before, a first round pick that just doesn't seem to fit into the system or what the coaching staff or the organization wants and needs a fresh start. Well, here it is. And he seems very in tune with the fact that this is a, another opportunity for him, very mature um, you know, joked even a little bit that he taught his brother Andre that move, the the special thought. <laughs> so they, you know, so he said Paul Paul Edmonds asked him about that today, and he did joke about it. So he said it was him that started working on it with him. So a little bit of sense of humor too. So uh, great size, you know, six three one ninety. Can't you can never argue with a, a size like that. And of course, the silky smooth hands and good shot. It was something any, any team would love to have. So you're not you're not a first round pick midway through the, the draft for, you know, if you're not good and he does have the skills, just didn't seem to work out in Detroit and he gets another opportunity here with the, and with the Jets organization or the Moose. Yeah. That, that'll be something to follow. And again, a guy like that has a lot. And you know, it's funny for all the, the impediments to players like Hanela and Samber getting into the lineup. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a different story for, you know, bottom six players more than any time we've seen before. I mean, we'll go yeah. into camp next year and, you know, Veselin and, and Harkins and Toninato, all players that were not regulars in the lineup, I mean, could all be mainstays when we get going. But Svechnikov, another player, and then, of course, Riley Nash, I think, will be in that lineup, whether he's a fourth liner or potentially, you know, playing in that spot that many of us, myself included, think Veselin might have the inside track on. Mm-hmm. Uh, but there will be a lot to determine. Back to minicamp, though. Um, we've talked about the big names. I mean, the top picks. There's a lot of other players in the organization there. You've been watching it. I mean, who, uh, a- any guys that might not be regular names to listeners and Winnipeg Jet fans that have sort of uh, stood out that you took notice of over the first couple of days? Well, first off, it's the first time we've seen Arvid Holm, right? Uh, the big goaltender. He is large. Um, and it's going to be fascinating to watch how they work out that goaltending situation with the Manitoba Moose, with him and Mikhail Burden. But I think they've got two good ones there again, right? Obviously, uh, Comrie has earned this opportunity, and I believe that, you know, this is his time, and I think he's going to run with it with the Winnipeg Jets. But so Arvin Holm has certainly stood out to me. And Jonathan Kovacevic, like we don't talk about him enough, right? He, he kind of moved up the depth chart with the Manitoba Moose last year. I, I think he had 11 points in his last 10 games in the American Hockey League. We keep talking about Hanela and, and Sandberg. Kovacevic, I think, has a very good chance of getting some looks this year as well. And Paul Maurice touched on the fact yesterday, Huss, that this the, the younger players are going to get a lot of looks here in the preseason, which is ordinarily not the case, right? You're still at home ice. you got the big dogs going all the time. You still want to see how that fits in. But there's a lot of guys here that need looks to see how they're going to fit in with the organization. So that that for Jets fans out there, you know, expect a lot of younger rosters. You know, preseason clearly doesn't matter in terms of wins and losses, but you got to see how guys are going to fit in. So uh, I think, you know, I know Kovacevic is a name that we know of, but that's the guy I've been watching a little bit here in, in, in mini camp. And clearly Svechnikov stood out and we talked about him. And Arvid Holm is a, a guy I'm going to be watching because it's been we've heard about him, but now he's finally over here on, on North American soil. You know, uh, Declan Chisholm, I mean, another young player that, you know, really stood out at times offensively for the Manitoba Moose. And then the guy that I'm really interested in and getting a good look at in some exhibition action 
is Leon Gavanka, uh, you yeah. know, another player in that mix. And of course, what an opportunity he has because he, in all likelihood, will be a member of the German Olympic team as well, JT. Yeah, and how about the experience that he had last year, the World Championships with with Germany, right? And then he, I think you find the best thing about we don't appreciate the World Championships for what they are, but it is huge. Clearly, in Europe, there's it's been well documented. But for another fine finish for Germany, I believe they finished fourth last year, and for Leon to be there and score a big goal in the quarterfinals, I think you, we can't emphasize enough what that does for his confidence. Um, so Leon had a great junior career. Um, had a slow start to his pro uh, pro career in the, in the American Hockey League. But I think next year or this year now, you can sense there's a little bit. This is third camp. And I know last year there was an ordinary camp. But this is third time through as a pro. And you can sense there's a little more confidence there. And there's no question that it, you can say there's that, that air confidence in him when he's talking today. Um, and the, even the fact that he that that Olympic experience for him is in your in the back of his mind. And you can tell how excited he is about it. So I think. Of all, you know, that, that's another guy we should be keeping an eye on for his time in the Manitoba Moose because there just seems to be something different about Leon Gavanka this year. And even touched on the fact of how German hockey is changing so much and what Leon Dreisaitl has meant. And um, it is on the rise. You know, we saw Tim Stutzla last year with the Ottawa Senators. So he's, he's pretty, he's very proud of how German hockey is going. But I think he's, as I mentioned, he's very, very confident heading into this year. Yes, it will be with the Manitoba Moose, but maybe there's another guy. like this. I think this is the deepest the Jets have been on the blue line since I've been here, no question. And I'm going back to the American Hockey League level, and I don't think there's anybody that can argue about that, but maybe in their history, right? It's taken a long time for Chevy to build this up to where it is right now, but I think it's it's as deep as it's going to get. And I, they, there's some other guys on the way here. Simon Lundmark is here for the first time. He was drafted a couple of years back as well. So that back end right now, Huss, is, uh, I think it looks to be set for some years to come. Yeah, I know. Listen, I, I agree 100 percent. I mean, you could make an argument that in the top six might not be there where the you know, when you had Buff and Truba and Myers. Mm -hmm. But when we talk about the depth, like the top six that the lineup is, including the guys that are in the press box and including the guys knocking on the door with the Manitoba Moose. Uh, honestly, I don't think there's much of a uh, comparison, which brings us to the excitement of main camp getting going. I guess a lot of the guys are coming back into town this weekend or over the next yeah. few days. Yeah, I've seen the, quite a few of them are on the ice today, and I saw Dylan DeMello's uh, got a mustache going. So, <laughs> 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 it, you know, you're like you, you're so used to seeing people look a certain way. So someone rolls in with longer hair, or someone rolls with somebody. But it's a pretty, it's a pretty solid mustache. I can't grow them, but he he looks pretty good. I saw Paul Stastny, Andrew Kopp, Adam Lowry, Mark Shifley. The big dogs are here, and um, I I think you know it's been a while. I don't know if the excitement's really going to start up right now, but I think as we start getting into exhibition games, I think this town's going to start getting on fire here right away. I know COVID's an issue, but I think we're just coming around the corner of the excitement of what this organization it looks like right now. And I'm talking top to bottom through to the Manitoba Moose. And, uh, you know, they've done, Craig Heisner and company have done a, a tremendous job building up the Moose. It looked a little, you know, thin to start. And Mark Morrison, I wasn't sure what he was going to have to work with, but that's all the way through. So as we start going through main camp and some exhibition games get going here, I think Winnipeg's starting to start lighting up here. I know we have all our COVID issues and we're all wondering, like, if you've got kids, I hope they stay in school like I do. But man, like now you're starting to feel the blood pumping and about how exciting this season it could be. It's a normal season for the most part, schedule wise. I know there's going to be some bumps along the way. This is a very fascinating hockey team that th that's in this city right now, and I think there's going to be a lot of fun, a lot of fun coming up here. Well, we've been hearing on a daily basis, really. I mean, ever since yeah. the trades, I mean, re-signing Paul Stastny, and then that 24-hour period with the Demello and the Schmidt acquisitions. I mean, they yeah. completely fired up the fan base. And the last few weeks has sort of been a bit of a lull. Like yeah. every like every check, uh, every box got checked early on. Yeah. Chevy actually hopefully got and put his line in the water and got out of town for a little bit because we yeah. know there's a lot of work to be done, but they got it done early. They did it well, and we're hearing that on a daily basis. Uh, what's the plan for next week? Uh, just fill fans in on uh, exactly uh, how a uh, mini camp will end up. I mean, I'm sure there'll be all the natural testing days. And right, twenty second is twenty second is physical, so you you better come in for that. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm you're, ready you're, for it. You look like you're in the best shape of your life. The vo the <laughs> vo two test, the bike with that thing in the yeah. mouth that those guys all talk about yeah. how much they love. <laughs> Break the records. That's what we're gonna go. You and I are gonna go and show some people up on that one. So that's the twenty second, and main camp gets underway on the twenty third. So. 
you know, uh, Paul Maurice touched on this as well. Like we'll see a lot of the younger guys, but there's going to be a lot of scrimmages in, in camp. So if anybody's around watching, there's going to be some entertainment because we all know how, how fun scrimmages can be. That's where the, the real fun is going to be, I think, outside of uh, outside the exhibition. But a, a very competitive training camp on the way. And that's only great for everybody that that's uh, that that's a Winnipeg Jet fan. They'll be able to take in summer camp. Yeah, and of course, fans. I believe the first game is that is next week. Twenty sixth, like, yeah, twenty yeah. six on Sunday against. Yeah, so it's it's coming fast. It certainly is. Well, uh, cannot wait for next week, and uh, it's just been great to see the guys on the ice here from mm-hmm. some of the Jets prospects and rookies, and uh, the real deal gets going next week when the rest of the team's back in town. Uh, they finish the testing and hit the ice as a squad for the first time, and then yeah. of course begin the exhibition season on the twenty sixth of September.